the 2024 season is right around the corner for us now. We are merely days away from our first practice session in Qatar. And that means it's time for you guys to know what I think is going to happen in MotoGP this year with my 10 categories of prediction. And once again, this year, we're being joined by our friend Luke to talk through everything MotoGP, give you our predictions. And then at the end of the season, we're going to add them all up and see how accurate we were. Once again, big thanks to Luke for coming on. Uh, always appreciated. And big thank you to you guys for joining us, watching. And as always, I want to know what you guys think is going to happen in MotoGP this season. So for all these predictions that we do, feel free to pop your predictions in the comments or we can come back to them later in the year and you can give me the old I told you so. We're using a new program to record this this year and for some reason my end hasn't recorded the video. So uh, all you're going to end up with is just a still picture of me. I'll put this up for you. And you can just enjoy that while you watch through the predictions and listen to me talk nonsense. Enjoy. Well, Luke, thanks uh, thanks again, mate, for coming on. Um, we've got uh, 10 categories to get through. And I'll, I was thinking, you know, maybe we'll have a little chat first and, you know, about, you know, testing and whatever. But I think we're going to cover it all by the time we answer all of these, you know. Um, I think this year the 10 categories I've got will pretty much discuss everything anyway. If there's anything left that you think of, or I think of, we'll talk about it at the end. Um, so our 10 categories, some of them are going to be worth one point each. Some of them are going to be worth more. This year, <laughs> I've got no categories where we can lose points because I'm sick of us finishing on like two points. So <laughs> we're only going to just rack up loads of points this season and, you know, it's going to be fun. All right. You ready? Right. Yeah, yeah. All, all ready. Now, the, the first category is... I don't really call it higher or lower, more or less, whatever it is. We're going to go through the whole championship order of last season of the full-time riders. However many points they were on, we're going to guess whether or not they're going to score more or less points this season. So last in last year's world championship standings for the full-time riders, astonishingly, was Joan Mir. He scored mm. 26 points. Is Juan Mir going to score more or less points this season, Luke? Juan Mir, uh, you'd like to think he's going to score more. So, yeah, I've got him down as, yeah, he'll score score more points this season than he did last. I I also have that. I think that's a bit of a no-brainer. He literally just needs to finish more than half the races, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He literally just needs to stay on the bike and he'll probably just score more points than he did last year, yeah. Now, is he capable of that? I don't know. I assume he is, but I say so. I'm looking at how this Honda's been in preseason, but yeah, it can't be worse, can it? And I just think it was such a one-off thing, him having a whole season of literally just nothing, right? I think the te the telltale part of it for that uh, for that last year's Honda was they didn't even try it in any of the testing. <laughs> they just sent him straight out on this year's bike. So yeah, and, like, and you know, it's. it's uh, just that tells me what I need to know, that that bike they know was awful. So they're just like, you know what? Just don't bother. Yeah, like we don't need to run any sort of like control test to see how that bike is. Just we're not going to use anything off it. It's right? a case of surely yeah. nothing can be worse than that bike was. So just go for it. I mean, he only scored 26 points. It was it was wild. That's grim, fair, that. That is so grim. Yeah, he was. I'm just looking now. He was low. Wow. He was only 11 points more than Paulus Fargo. And he was out for <laughs> half a year. Because he... Now, really, yeah. Obviously on this one, the only rider we're not going to cover in this is Pedro, being yep. a, the only rookie in the field. So let's move on now anyway. Raul Fernandez scored 51 points last year. Will he score more or less? Mm, probably more, but I just don't think it will be by much. I just, I don't, I don't know with Raul. He's one of those that I just don't think will make it in MotoGP. I think he's going to be one of those that will be like Moto2 World Superbike sort of caliber, but okay. just not that MotoGP level. But he was really good in Moto2. Like really, like really, there's yeah. so, got to be something in there, right? Yeah. And he's he looked okay in testing. I think he's been quicken up, you know? Yeah, but Maverick Vinales looks good in testing every year. <laughs> and has he ever won a championship? No. <laughs> I guess not. But you are saying it's going to be more points for Raul. Yeah, but not okay. not many. Okay, so that's a, a more for Raul Fernandez. And I think, I mean, that team looks a bit more settled now. I think Oliveira and Raul 
probably have a basis now to do better than last season. Mm. But um, 54 points Alex Rin scored last season. Now, this is a tricky one because either Yamaha is going to be uh, okay. I mean, I can see it just being okay. I don't know why. With Maybe it's just because the two riders are such good quality. But can he improve on his on his Honda points with that factory Yamaha? I'm going to say, yeah. I, I don't see why he can't. Uh, I think he did it on the Suzuki and that uh, the, the Suzuki and the Yamaha were the most similar bikes on the grid for, you know, the inline four engine. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I don't see a reason why, especially if Yamaha have pulled out a decent bike, but testing reports weren't looking amazing for them. But surely, again, it can't be worse than what that Honda was. I mean, I say this every year, but it can't be. It that Honda be. might go down as the one of the worst factory MotoGP bikes ever. Yeah. It, yeah, it definitely could be. I can't think I, of an instance where they... I mean, there's... We've had... Kawasaki have had some bad ones, but... And the earlier Prilias were yeah, pretty bad. bad. Um, that, that Honda might be the worst, even though it won a race. <laughs> It was still so bad. <laughs> yeah. But that's where Rinza scored 54 points. 25 of them were in run, one race. Well, I mean, yeah, I think so. weren't like 30 of them in one weekend. <laughs> yeah. Because it well, yeah, yeah, the sprint America, as well, didn't like, it? Points, yeah, yeah, for like that one weekend. Jeez. I should, I should also mention to you guys, I am playing along here. I've, I've, I've got the same, the reason I've, I've got the same answers as you so far, Luke. So okay. I think all three of them so far will score more points than last season. Yeah. yeah. This is where it gets interesting, though, because finishing two points ahead of Rins last season was his illustrious teammate and real favourite of mine, Taka Nakagami. Absolute, but I think he should be on a Repsol Honda or whatever it's called now. He should absolutely. I mean, he's the guy for the job, I thought. But he's got 56 points. Now, this year, and keep it in mind, I had my, where I struggle with this list is not everyone could score more points, Right. And I started going through this list going, yeah, he's got to score more than 50, right? He's got to score more than 70. He's got to score more than 20. You know, someone's got to score less. And I think, despite my love for the man, Taka is going to score less points than the 56 he scored last season. Well, we have our first disagreement then. Because I, I, <laughs> I think Taka's getting more. I'm, I'm, right. I'm back Taka. I'm back in we've, Taka. We've, we've swapped roles here compared I, to um, other seasons. Last year, I said he was going to finish last. This yeah. year, I'm him. I don't know what it is. He always has these one-off seasons where he just somehow pulls it out of the bag and will get decent results. I think, what was it, 2020? Was it when he started like challenging for podiums? Yeah, well, I, you know what? On YouTube, I think it was yesterday, MotoGP put up the Valencia 2020 race. Yeah, and he was And he was, he was absolutely amazing in that race. He was flying. And that bike it was, was so good. as well. Yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, so you're saying this year he's going to have a 2020. He's due one. No, not 2020. <laughs> just, uh, he's going to be fighting will, for, for third at Valencia. He'll be fighting for top 10s in every race rather than top 15s in every race. Okay. <laughs> I think that bike's going to push me a little bit more. There's a little bit I'm in that bike. It. Yeah, but is he yeah. going to... I mean, again, it's one of those ones where it's like, is he going to... Um, he's the most experienced rider at honda now like in terms of being on honda machinery well, so yeah. you'd like to think that they're going to put more on him for sort of not development wise but sort of like favor him in a little way where he is you know the japanese sort of, link to the honda and, and he's you're using you're right using now. a few more years of his feedback aren't you so yeah i yeah i mean maybe but you know again somebody's got to finish ahead of him right or below him if that's the case so out of those three Hondas then, I mean, we won't go into all this now because we've got more predictions later that this may come into. But that would mean that out of these Hondas, you know, they can't... I guess... I mean, I say this every year. Well, as everyone else says every year about Taka, I always said he was the best Honda. <laughs> He's the best one. Um, other Mark, obviously. But I, this is the first year that I sort of can't see him actually being ahead of the other Hondas. But... I mean, I don't I know. Still, Every other year I've backed him finish. in. He'll still finish, like, last Honda, I reckon. I don't think he's going to... But he'll score more than 56 up. points. He will score more than that. Like, maybe minorly more. We're talking, like, 60 points, maybe. He'll hit, like, a couple more, but... Yeah. A lot of these I was on the fence up for. 
So it's yeah, like, I actually think it'll probably be about the same. Yeah. But there's a lot that I think have hit their peak and yeah. are either going to go a little bit up or drastically down from where they're yeah. currently at. Okay. So where do you sit then on next man? So there's a bit of a gap here. 56 points from Taka. 71 points was the next in the championship. Augusto Fernandez. Does mm. a year under his belt get him more or less points? I've gone less. I think with the prodigal son of Pedro Acosta coming into that that camp, he's not going to get any sort of time, let's be honest. KTM are going to want Gas Gas and Tech Free's full attention on Pedro. They see him as their championship contender for the years like coming. Yeah, They've worked so hard to keep him into this uh, in the KTM umbrella. They sacked Paul Espargaro for it and sent him off to the test team. So they're going to want Pedro to be a favourite. I just don't see... Augusto getting the attention that he sort of deserves after his rookie season. So I just purely think he's going to fall back a little bit, but not too much. But yeah, I don't think he'll reach as high as he was. I, I tend to agree. I think they say Pedro as like their um, their, their mark, I suppose, is going to deliver, mm. the, like take them to the promised land kind of thing. So a year at Gas Gas, they'll probably Sharf Miller next season. And yep. then, um, you know, depending. Uh, Miller needs a blinder to keep that seat, really. Um, mm. And Pedro needs a bit of a stinker, really, uh, to, for them to think, oh, maybe he needs another year. But, I, yeah, I also think Augusto Fernandez will get less points. So, and maybe be harsh because he did show a little bit of promise towards the end of the season. Yep. He started to build a bit of a base. But, like you said, I've got everyone else thinking, I've, the guys behind him that are definitely scoring more points, like, I've you know, I've got Mir... Rins, you know, I think they have to score more points and someone has to miss out, right? And yeah. he's the one that I've got is missing out from that lot. I, I wouldn't be surprised if KTM as well, if they pull their usual antics and someone in like uh, Celestino Vietti or Dennis Onshu does really well in Moto2 this year. And they're like, do you know what, Augusto? You're off. And do you think there's a to... chance they could do that? Yeah, especially if Dennis, who's come through the whole uh, Red Bull rookie, I think he came through rookies pathway as well. I know he came mm-hmm. through the Asian Talent Cup. He's pretty but... much always been on Red Bull branding, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah, he's always been on Red Bull branding. So I could definitely see them as if he has a like, like the next two good years, or even Chalastino, where he's moved over. I could just see it a bit of a, yeah, you've had two years, you've not had a podium, off you go. Yeah, it's more time than they gave Remy and and Raul. Well, and, uh... yeah, I mean, I could go on about what the what's happened with Remy and that, but um. Yeah, and Augusto, he's good though. You're almost, like yeah, he, I, I don't, I don't mind him. And but it is one of those ones where it was like it was a bit of a coin toss whether they were going to keep him or Paul, you know. And yeah. they probably made the right decision in the end when you go with the younger rider. But yeah. it really was like you, they could have easily just done away with him as well after a season, like what they did with Remy. What else talks that Miller was the one going to be going as well. Mm. So you so, know, that's yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, you know they spent good money to get him in. You know the only one that so, was like sure on he was staying was Binder because yeah. they extended him to what twenty twenty six or something twenty twenty seven. They and he's their him. guy. I think. I think even when Pedro yeah. comes up, they'll still they still. I think they adore Brad Binder. Um, him and Pedro will be there. The mm. the two runners definitely for years to come. Yeah, I think so. I think that's their their dream their dream lineup. The strongest lineup will be those two. Again, the factory team. Two that have come through that Red Bull uh, that KTM branch as well. Mm. So yeah, yeah, that's why they want them. Okay, uh, next up, five points ahead at the end of the season, 76 points, Miguel Oliveira. Has to be an improvement here, right? Has to be. He was injured for the majority of last season again. Yeah. That, that just has to be. I just And you just know his quality. You know his quality because you've seen it before, even just on like um, satellite machinery. Um, I'm not sure. Does he, have a, does he get a full factory bike of Aprilia this year? I think he has. I think he has got one. I think it's just maybe Raul that doesn't, doesn't get one. I even feel like Raul might have one, but I'm not sure on that. We'll have to have a look. But anyway, someone will be able to tell us maybe in the comments as well. Um, but yeah, I, so we're both going more points for Oliveira. Yeah. Yeah, I can see he's just, like you said, injuries and stuff last season. If he just gets a full year under his belt, he'll smash that score. Um, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a proven race winner. He's a, yeah. not a proven championship challenger in MotoGP, but he's a mm. championship challenger in lower classes. So Yeah, exactly. I've, he's got the talent, definitely. He's really talented. He just hasn't had that chance to show it yet. Okay. So, I mean, so far, you've only said one rider scores less. Yes. And I've and said two. So yes. someone has to be scoring less points. There's not more points to give out, right? In fact, do we have the same amount of races? 
think we do. Uh, we might have one more. Because we've gained Kazakhstan, but we've lost Argentina. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, we so, lost yeah, Argentina. good. This will work yeah. out then. <laughs> yeah, All but right. when, when you look at the next three riders that you're about to say, even mm. potentially four, five, six that you say, there's a chance that all of them are going to score more as well. Well, yeah, I mean, they pretty much all have to. So let's not give away too much, but the next one's Zanoa Bastianini, and we're both in complete agreement that he's going to score more points. He scored 84 yeah, points last season. It's got to be. He missed so many races. I, I think he'll he score there. more points than that this season in race wins. Like, just race wins. Oh, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> if she includes sprint wins and stuff, I think he'll just cover that in race. Like, if he wins, you know, a few Grand Prix and a few sprints, you've pretty much you've just about covered that score. So he, he missed nine whole race weekends last season. Like... I didn't realize it was that many. He missed near enough half the season and still finished above some pretty decent riders who were below him. He's above a world champion, a MotoGP world champion. Yeah, but so was everyone. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Literally That's the whole the field finished above him. Teddy Pedrosa got more points than he did. He did. <laughs> so 84 points for Bestia. He's easily getting that. Next up, Mark Marquez got 96 points. More points for Mark. Can't be. Yeah, I don't I think, think so I need to explain that. You know, and we'll probably talk about Mark a bit more later, but it has to score more points than that. Yeah, he's going to Ducati. He's got to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ducati just order. Unless you get injured, you score more points than that. Exactly. Um next up, 102 points. My one of my favourites, Frankie Morbidelli. hmm Will the Ducati move? do the same thing for him? Is a Ducati just guaranteed more than 100 points if you've finished the season, if you ride a whole season? First of all, what are your thoughts on their, their new their new colour scheme for this year at Pramac? Have you seen it? Uh, the... Yeah, I do. I like it. darker, isn't it? It's like the, the white yeah. is now black and there's a little bit, this colours have moved a little bit. Red's moving uh, about. Purple and red, I think, is a bit of a clash, generally. Uh, so I don't love it. I always preferred their, their blue and red and white. I thought that was awesome. Yep. Uh, the purple grew on me a little bit. The purple and white and red. I didn't mind it. I thought it was fine. At least I don't mind when things don't look that good, like with the purple. But it's a difference. It's a. It looks. It, there's a purple bike. Great. Like don't want another red or orange one, do we? You know. So there's a purple bike on the grid. So I like it no matter what because it's yeah. different. Um, the black may grow on me, but I think the white looked a bit nicer, a mm. bit cleaner. I don't know what it is. It's just brighter and I don't know. But again, um, I, I tend to only like the darker colored bikes if it's like a blacked out, like I love, like even the, the factory Yamaha with the little bits of like blue and stuff, I'm like, it's, eh, it's okay. Black bike, maybe with some white on it, like, you know, perfect. The old yeah. the old West Honda Pons and, you know, um, stuff like that. The, the black, maybe just really black that thing out and make it a black yeah. bike. I'd be happy. But HRC ran one of that in British Superbike a couple of years ago. That looked meant, yeah. Yeah, so stuff Let like that, I'm it. always going to be a fan. But this kind of like the purple and red with the black, not so much. I like the white better, I think. Yeah, um, it was it was very hotly disputed on social media. Only reason I brought it up. Yeah, well, I mean, doesn't really matter too much to me. For me, it's just like, do the bikes all look different to one another? That's what I want. Like, I don't want yeah. two teams that are running red. Like, gas, gas, go do something else. Make it white, you know. <laughs> white with a bit of red you know something um i like it when they're all completely different but that's yeah. just me nice and colorful so i like the purple i as much as i don't really like it aesthetically it's fine like i like it yeah does frankie score more points i was nailed on a hundred percent yes until i thought about his lack of testing time because he has not spun a wheel yet since valencia Correct. on that but does that affect you past maybe the first three or four Grand Prix? Exactly. That's what I, I think at the start of his year is going to be very mediocre, borderline poor. But I'd like to think he will score more points again because surely a move to that Ducati will just be what he needs for to get that career back on track. And I mean, like, if you look at someone, well, who are the, the, the worst two Ducatis other than Bastianini last season were Digi and Alex Marquez. And... I know Digi came strong at the end of the year, but I still... So he got a win, so he picked up 25 points with a win. But I, I think just you're getting 100 points if you just ride the Ducati to where it's supposed to be, I think. Mm-hmm. So maybe at the very least, he's maybe getting around that mark. But I think if he's just 
any good at all. He'll get more than that. So I'm going with more points. To rank him. I think he will. I mean, either he's completely lost it and he'll just never get it back or he gets something back this year. Just anything, like a little bit, you know. So I'm going to go more points. You're going more points? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah I'll agree. More yeah, points more. for Frankie. So somebody has to be scoring less points, Luke. Somebody in this field has to mm. score less points. The next rider, as we just mentioned, 49 points ahead of that was Fabio Di Antonio. 151 points. Does lightning strike twice for Digi? I originally I thought yes, but I'm now leaning towards no. I think about it more. He's left that team behind that he had, and he's left the crew that he was working with behind. Obviously, Frankie Carcetti's now crew chief for Mark. So I'm purely going to say, not that I don't think VR46 are a good team and don't have good crew. I just don't think they're going to get the best out of Fabio like they did at the end of last year. Because really, he only got that good performance after Ducati told him, you're not going to be riding with us next year. And it's sort of, he just tried this drastically different thing and it worked for him. But I just, I don't know. I think it might have been the pressure was on for him to find a ride. He upped his game. But I think, I don't know. I just don't think he'll do it again this year. Yeah, I'm on the fence. I think he'll score about that. Yeah. I think he'll, I think he'll take a bit of confidence into the start of the year from the end of last season. I think he will get good results early on, but I can see it dying off come yeah. later in the season in but a bit of an opposite of what he's done this season. We've last seen season, with Digi so. that one sort of crash knocks his confidence because at the start of last season, his testing time was amazing. He then had a massive crash at the end of testing and then was nowhere at the start of the season. So it's one of those with him. Yeah, so you've got him at less points. I've got yeah. him at more in the sense that I think he's probably got to score 152. Right, like I'm on the but, fence with him. Yeah. I, I could have tossed a coin with Digi. Um, and even now when we're talking about it, I do think maybe I've got that wrong. I think maybe he might score. I, it, it will be close. It will be mm. close. Um, but he's an interesting case. And I know everybody gets excited about, right, like with Digi, everyone's all on board with him, aren't they, at the moment? Because they're like, oh, Digi. And, he's, and I think he will be good at VR46. I think it'll be a good environment for him. Um. But yeah, I've got him scoring about the same. To be honest, I'll 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 go for more, and you go for less. All right. Yep. <laughs> Next up, Jack Miller, 163 points in what ended up being an extremely disappointing total. I've got to say, for the amount of pace he had on that bike at times, he was so quick, so quick at times on that bike, and very frustrating for an Australian to watch that, thinking where he could have ended up in the championship. Had he not binned off a couple of times where, you know, he was he was running third or fourth or looked like he was had the pace to go and win it, you know. Um what right was it Valencia or where was he winning? And I was like, oh finally he's, he's gonna Oh yeah, there was one, wasn't there? Um was it At Valencia? The end of the season, um, it might have been Valencia. Oh, Valencia. Um, oh. And I was he was just he just got away from the field and I was like, oh sweet, we're on here and finally <laughs> Miller's gonna give us that that yeah, win. It was Valencia. Yeah, and it's uh, and he's and he's crashed in that one as well. Very disappointing. I've I I think if KTM brings the same level of equipment this season, um, I think he surely he scores more points. Yeah, I'm with you there. Is it, I I just I've said this every year. Hopefully, Jack irons out the issues that we've seen from him for his whole MotoGP career, and he stops crashing out of great opportunities because he really beats himself up after he does it as well mm. but he still continues he still does it, yeah. That. yeah still does it and uh i love him he's such a character in moto gp he's what mm. moto gp needs but yeah i will i will say more you got more i don't know if it'll be like jack will win a couple of races or jack will get like one or two more points than last year yeah it's, it's one of those the, the problem with jack is like if, let, let's just say that, for, for argument's sake, that KTM is about the same level as last season. They're capable of winning races occasionally. They're consistently on the front row or, or up the front in, in the times, especially Jack. Um, and they can compete for podiums at most circuits. In that sense, you'd think Miller has to do better than that. But the mm. problem with Jack is 
where you lose confidence in him is you that bike could be that good again and you could easily see him scoring less points than that because of the things yeah. we just mentioned yeah because he could self-destruct at any moment yeah. in really good positions and the amount of times where I, like i said when leading one race he's been on the podium crash out of the podium positions of like two or three times probably last season um think about how many points that he's left on the table he could have been finishing up up in and around the top five yeah and he's yeah, ended yeah, up yeah, way down really there He's ended up behind, I, you know, Quattararo and, and Alex Marquez. There, it's, it's strange. I, I don't read into his testing times though for this year. Um, I'll no, just I'm look not at, been looking much at KTM's testing times either. Yeah, well, all of us last year were like, they're, they've they've got an awful bike. They're all down at the bottom end, and then they came out on the opening day at Portugal and jacked up the timesheets. Yeah. So, I, I don't I don't look at that. Yeah, anymore, I think they. Right? I think they've. I don't think they'll have dropped off too much. F at no. all. Okay, on 172 points, we did have Fabio Quattararo. Is Yamaha given him anything this year that he can improve upon that? I have said for Quattararo, he's going to score less. Less? Okay. I just don't. I think Honda might have made a step. I don't think Yamaha have. They bang on again about, oh, we've got more top speed. But it's the same things from Quattararo. We've got more top speed, but we can't put it to the ground. We can't get that grunt out of a corner like the Ducati, like the KTM have. We... He's been crying out for it for years, and they so, still haven't given it. So they're getting Even to the Cal same Crutchlow. top speed at the end of the straight, but he's given up two bike lengths as they come off the corner. Yeah, Cal Crutchlow, since he took over that test rider role, has been like, yeah, that's our main issue. And they've just never listened to them. Uh, it's a, Well, they did it with Rossi as well. Rossi and Vinales complained about the same thing, yeah. and we're still in the same scenario. How many years later? Like, Makes you wonder what it would take for them to turn that around and like i mean maybe are they not listening or are they not capable of finding the solution have they been trying i mean i don't know i mean it sounds well, like when you listen to what the riders say they're frustrated they're saying well you're not giving it to me you're not what are you what do you work you're not trying are the engineers trying that at all or are they mm. just not capable of actually delivering that do they not know how or are they happy with their one world championship every what are we on now every five years they're getting one world championship now yeah, and yeah, maybe they are it's for a minimum amount of you know maybe if they look at it as a cost benefit analysis, if they go well if we can just keep spending this much and if we just win one every few years, every two two world championships every ten years it's fine, you know he's quite right. It's be. hard to argue with, um, because you don't know the finances of these big companies. But well, if if it's another poor season, Quattararo has got to leave at the end. Yeah, of his he, contract. he'll be going go yeah. anywhere anywhere but where he currently is <laughs> yeah yeah and there will be i mean the rider mark is going to be outrageous but i've oh, got yeah, him scoring like more points because i think huh? when i think about fabio and i think about the seasons in the past where the yamaha has been poor but he's been good it doesn't take much of an improvement for him to extract a lot yeah right so I think even if they've made, if they go, oh, look, we gave you the top speed. And I think he could probably turn around and go, look, I don't have quite what I want yet, but I'm good enough to go and get you some results. So I can see him turning that into something. It is a bit of a long shot, but I'm going to go with more points for Fabio. The big thing for me with that as well is if, say, he does put pen to paper that he's going to Aprilia for 2025, early on in the 2024 season is he really going to care about getting yamaha results is the other thing that, that i look at it the only thing he has money incentives because he'll probably have a bonus for if he finishes somewhere in the championship and wins races but would he really want to get yamaha results or would he because they're not going to give him any new material either if he puts the pen to paper to go somewhere else so True. i just um yeah i don't see it i do think he i mean as a as a rider i think he'd have enough sort of competitive spirit to be like i want to do as well as possible every single time he goes out there you know like i don't think he'd ever be packing it in in a sense or just he's backing off i think he's just like he's a bit of an animal in that sense i think he'd just go for it but like i said whether or not they then give him what he needs or everything would then go to rins and just rins really so yeah i mean it, another one that could go very easily either way Boy, yeah now the next one is Alex Marquez. He's got 177 points. With his brother across him in the garage now, is he capable of scoring another 177 points? This one, 
I thought I'd have to think a while for Alex Marquez, but when I sat there and looked at it, I just don't think he will. He won't reach that height again, I don't think. All the effort in Grassini is, is going to Mark. Let's be real. It, the, Alex Marquez was big when they got him because Digi was nowhere. Yeah. And now they've got the eight-time world champion. <laughs> Why would you not? You've seen the amount of even Gigi Delinia's been in that garage listening to Mark Marquez's feedback. Yeah. So I just don't. And we've seen as well, even when they were, uh, like, not teammates. Like last season, Alex would not attack his brother. There'd be no. times where you could see Alex behind Mark and you'd be like, right, at the end of this straight, you could definitely make that move with that Ducati you've got under you. And he'd just sit there and like he'd look like he's holding back. Mm. And it's like, and then someone else gets in front of him and bang, he's straight past them. It reminds me of uh, Mark and Lorenzo in 2015 in Valencia yeah. when anyone else gets in front of Mark and he'd make the move. It's the same with Alex. It's yeah, really yeah. weird. I just, I think he's I don't, scared. I don't know if they're, and, and to be fair to Alex, I don't know if that's necessarily just a brotherly thing or a fear of maybe a collision. And when he knows yeah. his brother's, injury history and stuff like that maybe that does enter his mind he's like well if i drop the front as i'm going up the inside and take him out and fractures his arm again or something it's like that he could his career could be over so i don't know if there is that maybe that plays on his mind or if it literally is just like he's my my big brother and he's better than me and i don't pass him on track i don't know i don't know if yeah which what it is but you're right he does look like he's holding back a, okay especially when you like his bike so much better than mark's the last few years like especially well last season like, just go past it. Yeah, it was... Yeah. Well, you'd see, like, Paul and the Leish, Aspargo, when they were on good competitive bikes together, they mm. were knocking chunks out of yeah, each other. Yeah, built differently the Aspargo brothers, aren't they? The yeah, Leish is man, man. Yeah, if they knocked each other off, they wouldn't care. It nah. was, they were just absolutely smack into each other on track. Like, like little kids playing again, isn't it? With yeah, them they were mental. Um, yeah. No, I, yeah, I don't think it was Less that, points though. for Alex. I think less points for Alex as well. Yeah. Um, I think there's too too much competition on the Ducati now. And whereas I last year I was like 100%, he'll be seventh best Ducati, right? Because I was like, Digi's not scoring more points than him, right? But but then obviously with best year getting injured, he ended up the worst Ducati. But other than that, you know that he's right up there. This yeah. season with Digi actually coming good now, could Alex end up the worst Ducati? I think that's a real possibility. Yeah, it's a possibility. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, definitely in that sense, I've got him on less points. Next up, I think this one's an easy one. Luca Marini scored a 201 points. You've got him scoring less, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With his move to Honda. The, the gone are the days of his, you know, front rows and podiums and challenging for wins in sprints and things like that. I, that that's done for him for at least 12 months now. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Marini, I, I mean, it's a, just a couple of top fives would be good for him this year. On that, yeah, on that. I, be... will they be capable of that? It all depends. They looked good, and he seems to like it. He's not really said too much, too bad about the Honda yet. Yeah, I wonder but... if that's all um, just him yeah. being a super nice guy, though. Mm, they've because he looks like a nice lad with his head switched on, doesn't he? Um, but we'll see if he can emulate what his brother did at, at Repsol. Well, it's the... No, he's, gonna need to, he's gonna need to emulate what he did at Yamaha, I think, first year. Just pull yeah. anything out of this. So no. um Yeah, look, I think it'll be interesting between those well, probably all four Honda rides. Like you mentioned, Tacker's always there, isn't he? He's consistent, he stays on the bike. If the bike's again a bit volatile and spits riders off, um, it'll be the guy who scores the most points will be the one that knows how to stay on it, you know. So yeah, less points for Marina. I think that's a that's Easy one. Now it gets interesting here. Maverick Vinales mm. scored two hundred and four points. This, this is one of those ones where I think Maverick include elation that basically score what that bike is worth. I think. Yeah. You know. So is the Yam Aprilia any better or is it any worse? Is what I looked at it as. Um, <sighs> Again, on the timing sheets for testing, they look better, but we've seen Maverick top testing on a Yamaha, which then ended up being awful. Yeah, I wouldn't so, look at Mav's testing times at all. But then I wouldn't look at Alicia's either, because we've seen weekends where Alicia's really close to the top of the timesheets and then just drops in, in races. So mm-hmm. I think Maverick's going to score more, though. I okay. do. I Basically, I think the Aprilia boys are going to swap. 
basically. Right. I don't know if there'll be a bit of a drop place. off for Aleish. Are you, are you saying that? I'm I'm saying Aleish is going to drop off. He's talked about he's going to retire at the end of this year, potentially. Mm-hmm. So that might you know might just want to be a, an injury free season for Aleish. Get get some more money in for that retirement fund. But I don't think he would with Aleish. He's I don't think he's one of those riders. But I just don't see him fighting for wins as much. I don't know. There there are things with Aleish that I'm not I'm not sure about yet. Yeah. Uh I've got him scoring Mav scoring less. Yeah. Fair. Again, I think these two will probably end up on about the same. Yeah. And just toss a coin. There's there's gonna be a few points here or there. Um so for Aleish, are you predicting less points? He scored two hundred and six. Yeah. I'm going Maverick with more and Aleish with less. So yeah. I've done the opposite. I said Aleish will score a few more. But again, it would only be like yes. within 10 points either side. Yeah. I, think. I um, genuinely think they'll swap by like, what are they on this year? Like three points between them or something? Two points between them. Yeah. I think they will end up probably being like that again, but the other yeah. way around. Yeah I, yeah. I think they'll score around the 200 mark. Um, I can't see their season being that much different from last season. No. No. Okay. Next up, Johan Zarco scored 225 points. He moves to the most gorgeous LCR Honda Castrol bike you've ever seen. Unfortunately, it's probably not going to be as quick as his old purple Pramac, is it? No, 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 no. But if there was a competition for who has the best looking bike on the grid, Zarco's champion by like 200 points. Bonus points, you get a Easily. win's worth of points. You get 25 points for best looking bike. Right? Zarco they should won. do every race in my eyes this season if he's on that bike. Don't you just hope race. he's at the front a lot so you, the bike's always on the telly? Oh, it just looks it looks <laughs> perfect. Like, they couldn't have done a better job, could they? No, it's just, it is, it's mm, just Colin Edwards super bikes kind of thing going on yeah, but without the retro bike. You know. It's it's one of the you know, it just reminds me of the, the Bayless uh, Edwards battle at Imola. It's the, the, you see yeah. it and that's what comes to mind but yeah. It's got a French it was a good time. Day, so. It was yeah. a good time that that yeah, it just it's an incredible looking bike. And yeah. to be fair, again, once again, LCR, the, the Itamitsu bike looks great. I think yeah, I've never really been a fan of the Itamitsu I, bike. See, I've always been, even when they got Castrol on that second bike, but it wasn't a full Castrol livery. Yeah. I still really obviously really liked it. It was great. I always kind of liked the Itamitsu with the like the red and white with a bit of black, a bit of gold on there. I kind of liked it. I really liked it, um, and I think that I think that it's the best looking team. Oh, I think it's the, the best. The, the Castro side of it is, in my opinion. Yeah, I so, yeah. don't think that's going to emulate results. I no, think Zaka is going to score agree. less points. I think uh, if Zaka scores two hundred twenty-five points, they should just give him the world championship. I don't care if he loses the world championship by two hundred fifty points. If he scores two hundred twenty-five points, just be like honorary world champion. I think. Oh yeah, he will win. Like, if there was like rider of the year, then he would win <laughs> that that easily. Like, there was there is no way that I, I do. I just hope that he's in enough battles or enough close enough to the front that they do get that bike on telly a lot. I don't want nice to see to that at. bike on TV on its side, <laughs> scuffed and destroyed. That's the he's only. He's not a huge thing. crasher though, is he, Zarko? He can be if he wants to be. That's the thing with Zarko. He's crashed a few times at the front in races on a Yamaha. I've oh, seen that. I, I, only, hang on. He only crashes when he's winning. Yeah. When he can there win was, the race is the only time. He, so if he's times. running around in the midfield, he'll be fine. No, he's not. That, he can't. He can't like choke. You know. That beautiful Tech Free Yamaha he was on at the time got destroyed quite a few times. Oh, that was but, lovely as well, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a good looking bike. Better than the current one. They should have just <laughs> stolen that Tech Free livery and put that yeah. on the face. Like, Oh, perfect. Um, 293 points Brad Binder had a terrific season last season can he back it up I have said yes I had to look then to remember okay. what, I'd, what I'd said for Binder I reckon yeah I reckon he will so he's got a 300 pointer in him he will challenge for uh, top 3 in the championship a lot more than he did this year I reckon okay. I think he's he's going up there I reckon that was my initial thought because you just you want to get behind him, don't you? You like, oh, and when you watch him, he feels like the kind of rider you can bank on, you know. Yeah. Um, but I've got him Not scoring less, and it's an yeah. interesting reason. Not that I think he's going to have a worse season. I think there's too many points at the front that are going to be shared around. 
Okay. When you look at all these guys, you know, Mark getting involved, Bastianini getting involved. Um, the potential, I know it's a bit of a long shot of Morbidelli being up there with a the move to Ducati. You know, whenever someone goes on to a Ducati, you're like, oh, well, that they could have a share in the points now at the front. You know, the odd podium here and there where Brad would normally finish fourth, third, fourth, fifth. He's now finishing fifth, sixth, seventh. You know, so I've got him with less points for that reason that I think, I know you lose Zarco uh, from that conversation and you potentially, you lose Marini in a few races. Um, but I think you're gaining, you know, with Bastianini, Mark, potentially Oliveira and guys like that coming up. Pedro might mix it in there one or two races of the season, you know. And I can just see a lot of, a few of these front guys scoring, well, not having it as easy. Um, so I've got Binder scoring less, but it, once again, I, it could have gone either way for me. Could have gone either way. It's about, I think he'll score about the same. Yeah. But I've got him at slightly less. The next one's interesting because it's um, Marco Bezzecchi. Was this a bit of a, no, I want to say a one off because I think he will back it up in it to a degree. But is he capable of running? Of winning that many races again, for example, can he score another three hundred and twenty nine points? This this one was, I think, the hardest one to decide on in my mind. I think between Bez and Martin were the two really difficult ones to decide. And Bez, I have to say, he's going to score less. I just, I really like Bez as a rider. I think he's brilliant. But I just, like you've just said, there's too many riders who I think are going to be joining this battle for a top five. That Bez might be one of the ones that misses out. Like seeing his reaction after Valencia last year, uh, where he got taken out by Mark, and like what he was saying in the press after, that solidified to me even more that I like Bez because he, he is again like a Miller, just says what like everyone else is thinking. So I hope he does well, but I just think he might be the one that misses out a little bit. Because hmm. I don't think he's on a factory back again either. I think he's still on last year's. Yeah, I think he is. Yeah. So. so less points for you, less points for me as well. I think it'd be really tough to back that up really tough again like i said with all the extra competition yeah going onto that bike jorge martin scored 420 but eight points in the end he left a few points on the table as well at, at times at key times can he go can he score more and then bring himself more to the front of this like title battle i was thinking about i'm currently looking again at races where he really just didn't show up last year the one that springs to mind is Australia, where he had the race in the bag and he chose the wrong tyres and just dropped back in that final lap. But I've, I've got him down as more. I do, if he can stay consistent, then he'll score more. But that's the thing with Martin, he can be a bit of a miller and can just decide yeah. that he's not going to finish the race. So I think he's less bankable than, well, for example, maybe a Bastianini or a, or a Bagnaia in that sense that, He's got he, his speed's probably better over over a lap, even over several laps, over a, a race distance sometimes, you know. But there is always that thing where you think, is he just going to go flying like Marquez style, flying through the air in a minute, you know? Yeah. So it is. Um, I've got him scoring less. In what you'll see is a bit of a theme for me with these top riders, in that I just think there's more points will be shared across more riders, so I think mm -hmm. they probably all will score a little bit less. Um to a degree. So yeah, I've got him scoring less. So uh, will he score more or less? Uh, I haven't done for more, but just. Okay. I think it'll be close. I get, a lot of these guys, I think it'll be similar to last season. Uh, your world champion, Peko Banyai, without trying to give away a prediction for later, um, is he scoring more or less? Less, but only just. I've got him the same. Less but only yeah. just. I think he's obviously a massive favourite to three Pete. Um I'd like to see it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and I do again he leaves points on the table at times, but I can't see him just, improving that. I can't see him improve I think he'll just that's just where he is. That's who he is as a rider. The only I think if, if people can't get to that level, he wins. If people can get beyond that level, which they may be capable of doing he doesn't win. Yeah. Right. So the I've got him scoring race, less points, but only just. The only races I can think of last season where he left points on the table for his own doing was America, where he crashed out of 
the lead or second place. Uh, and India, where mm-hmm. he crashed out again on his own, I think. Because you think Le Mans and Catalonia, he got taken out. Yeah. And Argentina was the weather, I think, that caught him yeah. out. Uh, so I think by his own doing, there's only you know, two races he could get better on, really. And this is where I think Peko is different from a lot. Like, when you look at, like, the alien era champions, right? Guys like Lorenzo and even Pedrosa, even though he never really, he never won the championship, but he, he, he was yeah. that kind of rider. Yeah. Those guys didn't often put themselves in those sort of situations. Like you said, where, like, Peko is taken out by, you know, Mav and Le Mans and whatever. He's found himself in the pack. Whereas, like, back in the day, it was, like, Rossi, Stoner, Lorenzo, Pedrosa, and then eventually Marquez. They were just always coming off the front row, pretty much, and then riding at the front. But the four of them were in front by the end of the first corner, at the end of the first sector, right? So, Peko puts himself in some situations where he can perhaps occasionally let himself be caught out through other people's wrongdoing, you know, so, or in other things. So, I think... He is definitely beatable. Um, and then again, with Mark coming into you know, onto a Ducati, with Bastianini hopefully um, giving the season that we expected of him last season, it's not going to be smooth sailing for any of those guys at the front. And that's why, like, from Binder, Bez, Martin, and Peko, I've said they've all got to score less. Yeah. Because I just yeah. think the ch- the championship winner will score less than that. Yeah. 467 to sort of win the title. Um, and you've gone less for Peko. Yeah. Okay, so we've been going for about 40-odd minutes, 45 minutes, and we've done one category. So <laughs> let's let's move on to number two. The second category was the teammate killer, but we've added an extra dimension to this one. This one's worth two points this year. So the teammate mm-hmm. killer is for the biggest gap between two teammates, and you have to guess it in the right order. So X teammate X will score more points than teammate Y by the most. The other one we're doing for this one is the smallest gap between teammates. So, for example, you had those two-point gap between Mav and LH last year. So, that would have won that one, I assume. Um, so, who's your biggest gap between teammates and which teammate wallops the other one? Well, actually, I've gone for both Aprilia teams for the, <laughs> Great. the gap. Uh, <laughs> I was originally, so I'll start with the smallest gap. I was originally thinking Yamaha, because I was thinking Rins, Quattararo might be about the same. Um, but then, like we've just been saying, with the Aprilia teams, they've just, you know, we, we see Alation and Mav, and they've been pretty much on par of each yeah. other for the last two years. So I'm going, the smallest gap will be the factory Aprilia team, mm-hmm. and the biggest gap will be the, again, beautiful track house uh, Aprilia I think Miguel Oliveira will score more than uh, Raul Fernandez and Maverick will score more than Aleish. That's very... It's a very good pick, I think. Um, on smallest one, I've gone for the same. Aprilia, I just think they'll be the same. as Like we said, when we picked our points higher or lower there, we both think they're going to be around the 200-point mark come the end of the season. And I don't think any other teammate's going to be that close. Um, the... Biggest gap. This one was tough, I thought. Um, I did consider Trackhouse, but I didn't go with them in the end. Um, although I do... And you know why? I, I I don't ever really pay attention to testing times, but I've Rail sold me a dream, right, with his, with his performances in testing. So I just think if he just delivers a bit of, like, what he should do, he shouldn't let that gap get too big. I still think Oliveira will beat him, but... Um, the biggest gap, and it pains me to do it. It really does pain me to do it. I'm going for Jorge Martin over uh, Frankie Morbidelli at Prano. Uh, well, I think pra- Frankie, you know, will improve on last season because I think he has to. As, like you said, I think the slow start will cost him too many points early, and I think Martin will just be on it from the start and. Martin title challenging. I've, I think he'll get around the 400 or so point mark and Frankie may only get 120, 130, 150. I'm hoping he gets way more than that. I'm hoping he gets way more. Um, the only other team I considered as well, I mean, I based on the points last season, I actually did flirt again like I did last year with B 
Binder and Jack, but I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't say it out loud. I thought of Grassini as well. Please. I was about to say Grassini. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was the other one. I was yeah. about to say Grassini. I think Alex would just be a bit of a wuss. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, the Aprilias are a good shout, but yeah, like you said with the... The other one was, I mean, everyone's new favourite son, Digi, may just go back to his old self and Bez could yeah. be in a title fight and that could yeah, just yeah. open right up. Because uh, I think... I, I'm not as confident with Digi as everybody else is. I just, I think, is he like Tony Elias where like contracts would roll, contract season would roll around and he'd go and win like one of the last races and then the next yeah. year he'd turn up and be shit for the next 15 races again? Like... Not that he was that bad to me. This was actually quite good. But he did improve come the end of the season, right? He, he was always yeah. good at the end of the season when he didn't have a contract for the next year. And I just, is Digi doing that? Is that it. what he just did? So yeah. Digi was the only... That that Mooney VR46 was the only other one I, I thought. So, cool. Track house for you on biggest gap. Pramac for me. And we both went for Aprilia on the smallest gap. Yeah. Now, category three... And this will be awarded points um, for which one is this? Number three. Yes, most pole positions. Now, whoever gets closest is going to get a point, right? Now, if we both guess the same, then you have to guess it right to get a point. We're not just getting a point for nothing. Okay. So most wins. This includes. Um, did I say most wins or most poles? Most polls was most the, polls. The, most yeah. wins is next. Most polls. Who's got the most poll positions this season? I've gone with Mark Marquez. Okay. Uh, going back to the the poll hound days of uh of Mark, I reckon. Okay. All right. I've gone safe. I've gone for Jorge Martin. Yeah, he was my second choice, but yeah, I I thought you'd probably go Martins. I thought I'll chuck Mark Marquez out there. Now, when I with the points, when I say. For one point for closest. Let's say Bastianini gets the most polls, mm-hmm. but Martin comes second and Marco Marquez comes third. I'd get a point for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, no. Same works for the next category on most wins. This includes sprint wins, Grand Prix and sprint wins. Who have you got? I'm. I've got an answer written down, but I'm still debating it. <laughs> but I am gonna go with Paco. Purely for, like we were saying, I don't think he'll drop off by much if he mm-hmm. does at all, and he'll still be in that title fight, I reckon. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with the Italian. Yeah. Now, see, you went a bit rogue on your most polls, and I went safe, and you've gone safe, I think, on this one, yep. and I've gone a bit rogue. I've gone for Anea Bastianini. Oh, okay. As like this rise of the phoenix from the ashes, kind of back to his Grassini days, but with a factory bike. Yeah. You know. Um yeah. now do I think he's gonna win the world championship? I don't know. But that's we're gonna answer that question later. I do think he's just gonna like he just has a knack for winning races. I do like when he was at Grassini, he'd go win a race and he'd come like thirteenth the next week. Like he's yeah. got that in him. But I he he's a yeah. he's a winner type racer. He can win races. Whether he's a big sprint guy, I don't know, but he's definitely a guy over a full distance. Um but yeah, that's gonna be interesting. I'm looking forward to the result of that one actually. Now, the next one is the only one that's kind of a subjective thing. It's what circuit is going to produce race of the season. Now, we're going to award points for this one. Whatever we pick, I'm hoping we pick different. Um, whatever we pick, if we don't pick the, if you look, you tell yours, right? And then if we pick the same, I'm just going to change mine, right? So whatever we pick, those two races, we're going to go into a poll. We're going to put the poll up here on YouTube for people to vote. Uh, we might chuck it on x.com Twitter as well. Um, maybe with a couple of other races, if there was some other good races. And just whoever's out of me and you gets the most votes is going to get the point. What circuit's going to produce your race of the season? Phillip Island. I'm, I'm going for it. I reckon it, it's, it's, it, it normally does. So I'm seeing the world superbike racing we've just had there as well. And the new track that they've, they've, they've just laid the new surface. I think it's going to be the, 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 the race of the season. Now I'd probably just pick Phillip Island every year, no matter what, every, every year. It's always the best. Even when it wasn't the best, I always thought it was the best probably cause I was there. Right. For most of them. Um, 
But this year, I actually didn't pick Phillip Island, oh. thankfully. I have picked Le Mans. Okay. I think it throws up enough variables. It probably is going to rain. But the main reason that I've picked it is because I'm going to be there this year. I've okay. got my tickets for Le Mans. I'm off to France and I'm going to the French Grand Prix. And you can all wait for that video to come later in the year once I've been. It's, it's in May. The video might not come out till I don't know, June, July, who knows. Uh, but that video is coming, everyone, my little guide to Le Mans. So I'm going to go with Le Mans in hope that I get to be there for the best race of the season. Uh, so Philip Island view, you probably, control. yeah, I'm going to take my coat and I'm going to take my rain jacket, go get a brolly while I'm there, you know. It's going to be grim, but I think the race is going to be awesome. I imagine if it didn't rain. Imagine it. Yeah, yeah. They don't know what a good race did is. It, when it, did it rain last it. season? I don't think it did. I don't think it did at all. No. Right, we, can, we can't we get can... two of those in a row, are we? <laughs> no, it's going to rain for it. All right, number six. Category number six is the wooden spoon. Who's coming last of the full-time riders in the championship? Give it to me, Luke. Who you got? This is going to surprise you, but I don't think you would have crossed your mind at all as being last. Raul Fernandez. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, yeah, I just, I don't okay. see it. I don't see it. This may surprise you, Luke. I've gone for my, one of my favorite riders on the grid. Takanakagami. <laughs> You've done what I did last really year. really shit Honda. Like you said, they may have made a step Honda, in which case, Rail could be in trouble. Um, I'm going to look back at what happened last year. Who else was down the bottom at the end of last season? Mir Rins, Augusto Fernandez. Can you see any of them finishing lower than Rail? Or... I was between the Fernandezes. Okay. That's who I was between for last, the wooden spoon. But ultimately, I landed on the one who was near enough a wooden spoon last year. So, I just, with the Fernandezes, obviously, like I mentioned, I've been sold a dream on rail from testing, which I normally don't buy into, but this year I have. Um, and Augusto Fernandez, I think he made enough of a base last season that he's got more outright between being on a KTM and finding something to get him ahead of Tacker. The thing is, this like this season, if everyone just rises to the level that they should be at, it's really hard to think who would score the least amount of points out of this lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This seems like one of the best grids we've had in a few years. There's no, there's no one that stands out to me as being a, a, a stinker as such. Now, the only other way to do this was to predict another bad season for someone in terms of a lot of injuries and whatever. Yeah, um, I tried to take injuries out of this, like of who. Like Might with get. Pole last season. In fact, how many yeah. points did Pole score? Did he get less than Mir? He might have done. I think he did, yeah. yeah so Mir didn't like... actually come last. We've, we've, we've lied earlier when we said he came last. He came last out of who's left, right? Yeah. Um. So short, short of that, and unless you're going to predict, like pick a random rider, go, oh, I think he'll crash real badly, get injured, only compete in about five or six races, score like 12 points, running around in 15th. Like, unless you're predicting that, how else do you decide this? Well, yeah, because there's no, like, Tom Lutes or Carol Abrahams on the grid or anything no, anymore. No, so, no, no, it's not like that. It's not like that at all. Like, um, there, there, there was normally one, like, even if you look back, what, when was Tom Lutie on the grid? 2018? Maybe Tito Rabat in, like, 2020? When you yeah. look back to even then, like, you'd see one and you'd be like, oh, yeah, they're, they're finishing last again. But this year, I just I just don't see it. Like, I, it was really difficult to even say Raul Fernandez would be last. And this one, we're also going to do one point for closest. Same yep. as with the other ones. All right. Um, so if someone does have a stinker, we can still, you know, if, if Mir decides he crashes every race again and scores 26 points, it's whoever's closest to the bottom gets a point. Yep. Cool. So we're making sure we get lots of points this year. Look. Fingers I'm crossed. finish on like 2.5 points or some shit like that. I mean, <laughs> it's been grim some of those last, but I think we did better last season, didn't we? We did okay. I know. <laughs> okay, now we're into the real deal. We're going to actually yeah. introduce a different class here. We're going to Moto3. Who's your Moto3 world champion and why? I've gone David Alonso. Yeah. Uh, I, you Makes know, perfect sense. Obviously, I wanted to say Scott Ogden, but... It's uh, not there yet. No. 
Uh, I, I, you look at David Alonso in his rookie year. That was incredible. Like, it was near enough. Obviously, he didn't win the championship, but near enough Pedro's level of in terms of his win. ability to win races from nowhere. You're like, that's yeah. that. That's the same ability. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He just didn't have that little bit that Pedro had. Maybe Pedro's grid when he was came through in his rookie year was slightly weaker in Moto Three. I'm trying to think who else was on that grid, but. I think other things last year just fell into place that stopped Alonso from properly challenging for that title. Mm. But the end of his season was really good. So, yeah, yeah I, I just... And he's still in the same team. Yeah, it, it was his second year. He'll, he'll win it, I reckon. That's the obvious one, I think. And I I didn't go for that. Okay. I don't know. I, again, I've taken a risk here just to try and get a bit of an X factor in there. Um, I've gone for Colin Vire. Nice. Um, yeah. It is it is one of those ones where I do I actually genuinely think he'd beat David Alonso? Probably not. But I like, no. I'd like to pick someone outside of the box for this one because Moto three is a bit unpredictable sometimes. And you know, guys like Alonso, when they're scrapping at the front a lot, you know, crashes can happen and you know mm-hmm. like you saw last year with David Alonso where he's like he could have been in a position to win the world championship but didn't quite fall for it. Um and he kind of came on a bit later in the season, a bit bit, bit his his big run at the you know, race wins. Is, I can't mm. remember correctly anyway. He might have run one races earlier in the season. I can't yeah, remember. Got, they got one of Silverstone, I remember. Yeah, but I so, um, but yeah, I think Colin Vyer's steady progression is just like, he was not like explosive, then shit, then he was good, and then he was bad, and then he goes missing for three races, then he comes back and wins two. You know, he's very been like, he's running around like 10th to 15th, you know, then he sort of got a little bit better, then he got a little bit better, then he was competing for podiums, and then he's all of a sudden towards the end of the season, he's in the conversation um, at the front of the field. And I just think his steady build up, like a sustained build, you know, maybe he's just one of those guys that can just accumulate points. Maybe he won't win many races, but he'll be always near the front, a bit of a Sasaki, you know, from last season, where he was just consistently, you know, on the podium all the time, but never quick enough to win it but it also could put him in a position to almost win the world championship well that's what i was just looking at because he's lost sasaki as a teammate for next season mm-hmm. and he's now got tatsuki suzuki alongside him who i think he could probably beat in the championship yeah. to be honest but that's the thing is he now going to be the lead rider in that uh in that yeah, squad well, you know and they're, they're a team that usually their bikes do run near the front yeah, yeah. so they, they got john mcfear win in his last well, yeah. <laughs> three season so yeah, do you know what? I, I don't disagree with Colin Vire. I don't sit here and think that's an awful shout. I think that's a a valid a valid prediction. Who else is on your radar in Moto Three though? I was just looking through. Joel Kelso is is obviously on my radar. Uh, David Munoz, like he can't not be on someone's <laughs> radar. Yeah, um, it's hard to miss him when he's out on track. Uh, Scott Ogden and Josh Watley, obviously for the British reasons, a bit of bias, but hey ho. Um, Holgado, Rueda, Ortola. Like... Yeah, they're the guys I'd be looking at. Ortola, Rueda, I think will have a good season. I think he'll take a step this yeah. year. Um, there are some rookies I don't know enough about. To, yeah, to but say. one can surprise you. They, there's always one that, that sort of bursts on, isn't there? Yeah, there's the Australian rookie, Jacob. Yeah, I'm hoping, for, I'm hoping to see a bit of potential out of him as well. Yeah. We have him oh, he's he's in the tech free team. So, yeah, that's what I mean. There's the he's got a good he's got a good launching pad anyway. So if he can find any bit of talent and just get going, then there's a chance. But again, I don't know much about him myself. But no, I don't know. I'm hoping for just a solid debut season from him. But again, it's a solid grid that um, David Almanza as well. I've just noticed his mm-hmm. name. He did a wild card in Argentina, I think, and challenged yep. for the podium. So yeah, you know, there's a, there's a few that. I look at and think, Joe, you know what that they could maybe not challenge for the championship, but be in the top ten. So yep. it'll be another good year for Moto Three. I think so as well. And I think all those names mentioned, barring you know, some of them that are sort of you're looking at them and you're thinking, well, if they make a big step, they'll be top five finishers. But I mean, there's guys like you know Ortolas and things like that where you think that there's a very real chance he has a real shake at the championship. Olgado, Rueda. Very big, very big chance. Um, but I do think your standout favourite is probably Alonso. Yeah. And then I think, even though I've gone for Envaya, I think he's probably in that next group um, with the Ortolas and such. But um, it could be any one of them. could be any one of them. Hey, he was, he was my surprise of last year. I knew nothing about 
Bayer going into last season, mm. and I thought he was the really same. Solid. And when yeah. I started to see him do well, I really tracked him after that, and I was like, I, I really like this kid. And I did mention him quite a few times in my videos after Grand Prix weekends because I was really impressed with just like I said that that like the when you progress slowly like that rather than have these big up and downs every week. He's very. I know he did have his crashes, um, and I'm not saying he didn't, but generally his position in the field where he was crashing from for example you know has, has gone up and up and up in a really steady kind of progression you know so it's yeah and yeah i think if not this year it'll be next year but i'll, I'll back him in this year uh category eight Yamoto two world champion Again, I wanted to put Jake Dixon, but I just can't bring myself to do it. Uh, I'm, I've gone very obvious, I think, again. And I've gone without a gear. I just, I, I've liked him since he came into Grand Prix racing. Uh, sat with his fan club at Silverstone in, what right. year was that? 2022, I think that must have been when, uh, when I was sat with them. So, uh. Yeah, I'm 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 back in him because there's already talks he's off the MotoGP next year as well. Yeah, well, he's apparently, apparently signed for Premac, isn't he? Yeah, apparently he signed that contract, put pen to paper. A bit early, but um, yeah. So, so yeah, either, either either Frankie's um in trouble or they know they're losing Marty. Well, he wants to go to a factory team, so he's made that very clear. So mm. I wouldn't be surprised if Premac have already signed his replacement. Yeah, yeah, get it done early. Now there is a risk in signing someone that early. I think when they're still yes. in Moto Two. Um, he has a stinker of a season, you'd be in a bit of strife. Uh, I've also picked Fermi and Aldegar. I think it's just too obvious. Too obvious. Yeah. Uh, not to say that I don't think anyone else could win it, but just the form he showed at the end of last season, I think it would be silly to pick otherwise. Um, but generally, I mean, again, we'll do like we did in Moto3. Who are your outsiders? Who else can do it? Dixon's obviously uh, there or thereabouts. Yeah, obviously Dixon's one that I'm, I'm, I'm looking at. Um uh ayagura again has got to be one that i look at mm -hmm. like i um sergio garcia his second year in the championship not maybe challenge for a title but be up closer to podiums um philip salach and arbolino the mark vds boys yeah you can't rule them out as as uh challengers connect again if you can get that win um uh joe roberts is, is you know he's backing that American racing but, team look sharp and they're talking a bit of big talk that that team with him aren't they, they they're yeah. really backing him this season Hoppers reckons he can win the the, the championship but yep. Hopp would um <laughs> Manu Gonzalez uh Celestino Vietti those sort of people as well yeah yep. even be there even, or the even the rookies excite me who have come in uh Dennis Onchu uh Senna Senna Regius who's, yep. who's coming as well the one that like yeah they're the ones that sort of stand out. I think there's in Moto two. There's always the ones where you're like, they've they're in here and they could challenge, or they're here and they will do nothing again, <laughs> like they have done for the last four years of yep. the championship. And I'm looking at Cardaloose for that. I'm saying it again. <laughs> He's been there. How long has Javier Cardaloose been on this Moto two grid and done nothing? It's kind he, of his jam, isn't it? He has been in. This, yeah, he was there in 2018 to 2021 and scored no points. How is he back in this <laughs> class again? How has he come he back? Did, he didn't score no points, did he? He never scored. He scored. He started thirty-five races in Moto Two between twenty eighteen and twenty twenty-one, and didn't score a point. He finished fortieth in one of the championships. <laughs> he How must have not score a point in thirty. I reckon I'd score a point after thirty-five races. He scored. You know, just scored one. He scored a couple. There's gonna be one. There's gonna be one race where, you know, only fifteen guys finish, and you just stayed on. <laughs> he did at least right. one. He, to be fair to him, he did all right in the Moto uh, Two European Championship last year. Yeah, he did finish runner up. But come on, how is he back? <laughs> I, I don't know. He's just one of those I look at, and I'm like, he's good at talking those, his way into a team. He's got a good agent. He's got a good those agent. are the riders that I look at, and I'm like, you do not deserve to be back here at all. <laughs> You've had your chance. Well, yeah, and I mean, it's, it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. Aside from, I'm with you on a lot of those guys as well that you're looking at. I think Sergio Garcia is going to be really interesting. Yeah, 
I really like him. I think I really his, like him too. Because he's him and Agura are on the speed up this year as well. Yeah. So that'd be really interesting. That'd be a really good team, I think. Very yeah. competitive. Um, yeah, but I'm I'm expecting great. this is for him because obviously we expected it from Guevara, didn't we? Where like he oh, looked yeah. obviously yeah. Garcia looked great, but Guevara looked exceptional yeah. in Moto yeah. Three. And then last season, awesome. Garcia yeah. kind of of the three from that Moto Three graduates, Foggia as well. Um, Garcia looked more comfortable quicker. He just looks more ready, you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, and he started to pick up results towards the end of the season. He started to find himself in higher positions in practice and qualifying. Uh, and I think, yeah, he's really set to go now. I think he's set to to really get him make himself a proper Moto Two rider. I'd say even Guevara was the worst out of those three mm. to come up. Like that, it, it was really not, interesting. Not ability wise, like he looked the best in Moto Three. But then just when he got on that motor two bike, just looked uncomfortable. He didn't look mm. right on it. And I think that's the only way to put it. He just didn't look right on a motor two bike last season. And I don't think there was any point last season where I thought, do you know what? He looks good on this bike now. It just didn't seem to click at any point. And it is interesting, I think, with, with the way it is now, obviously with MotoGP coming in, and then we obviously go on in, in the, into Moto two and Moto three as opposed to the old 125 and 250 days. And someone who watched from someone who watched a lot of one two five and two fifty cc races, I always wonder sometimes now because obviously the progression now with a Moto two bike, you're trying to get find someone that's good on a big bike, right? That's why it's a big seven hundred cc thing, you know, for an intermediate class. You know, it used to be a two. I know it was a two stroke and it was quite quick, but it's a very different style and thing. So I think in the past where you get, you know, people come through, it's like oh, he's quick on a one two five. You're quick on a one two five. You're going to be quick on a two fifty, really, you know. Um, but these days, like the, the KTM being a 250, um, there's no guarantee that if you're quick on a 250, you're going to step up to a big bike that a big 740cc, yeah. whatever the hell it is, 735 or whatever they've got, that Triumph engine. A big bike, a proper big bike. Like that's a massive bike if you're riding on the street, if you think about it, you know. Um, and that's a bigger step, I think. Whereas though the big step used to be from two, a 250 to MotoGP and the very best would then figure it out when they got there. You know, now it's like you've got to figure it out between Moto3 and Moto2 and usually being good at Moto2 is a better base for being good at MotoGP because yeah. simp big bike, big bike. I know that obviously there's a lot of differences, aero and electronics and things like that. But generally the feeling of the bike of being on a big bike is something that, you know, you get comfortable with before you get to MotoGP now. So I'm wondering if you, the, the talent progression is different now. Like whereas though before you maybe would have got guys into MotoGP because they were great on a 250 and they were great on a 125, but now maybe with your Guevara and stuff, I'm not saying he's finished. You know, <laughs> he could just oh, be yeah, doing great yeah. this year. Um, but maybe they're just guys who are more suited to small bikes that used to maybe make it to MotoGP that maybe now perhaps won't because they can't get it to click on a Moto2 bike. Um. But yeah, just in food for thought for everyone there. Just like me on a little bit of a yeah. ramble. I um, think the only races Guevara did all right in last year were wet races as well. He finished sixth in Australia, and mm-hmm. I seem to remember that rained. And he finished ninth in Thailand. I can't remember if Thailand was dry or wet for Moto2 last year. I can't either. But I always, rem- when I think back to these races, I always just assume like Southeast Asia races are wet if I can't remember them. Just because like it, it rains a lot there. I was looking quickly then, but I can't find anything that says whether it was wet or not. So I'm going to say it might have been, but I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. Well, someone that will be tough. able to tell us in the comments. Let's get more algorithm going. Comment, everyone. Was it wet in Thailand? Was it Thailand you were talking about? Yeah. Yeah, Thailand. Yeah, yeah. Was it wet in Thailand? Someone tell us. I almost we won't, probably. We won't look it up. We'll let someone tell us in the comments. Okay. And just with all these, the World Championship predictions, we are one point for closest point. in this as well. Number nine is our MotoGP World Champion. Who's it going to be? Uh, you say yours. I still haven't decided on mine yet. <laughs> I'm still thinking. I'm going for Peko. Okay. I'm going for Peko. And it's not because I necessarily think he's three-time back-to-back World Champion quality, you know, but I just think the landscape of MotoGP at the moment, the way it is, there's no, I think the only guy that I think of as like being a kind of guy who would be alien level if he was around back in the day is probably Fabio. Obviously Mark, but Mark's in his situation. It's different. But Fabio, out of this new crop. 
Um, but he's not on the machine to do anything. So I think out of the rest of these guys, I've got them all pretty even. Pecco, Martin, ben, uh, Bastianini, maybe include like Binder as well. Bears, I think they're all capable of being world champion at the level that Banyai is at. And I think Banyai has found himself in an advantageous position compared to the others with being on the best bike and the factory lead rider of the factory of the best bike. Which he's obviously put himself in that situation by being extra, exceptionally good. You know. But I what I'm trying to say is I don't see where anyone can score more points than him in the situations they're in. You know, Martin, you might think on ability is just as good, if not better, when you look at his speed over a lap and, and his ability to win races. But does the hindrance of not being in a factory team just hold him back enough that Peko would just default probably beat him, right? Um, you th think the same with Binder. He may be good enough. He may be on Banyaya's level, but the KTM's not on the Ducati's level. So... And just when you do all those calculations, Banyaya versus him, Banyaya versus him, Banyaya versus him, I think you still give it to Banyaya. So, yeah, I I kind of want to agree with you, but at the same time I don't. But I I the whole off season I have thought Paco is going to be champion again, so I don't think I'm going to change. I think I'm going to stick with it. I was the last couple of days since you sent me these categories, I've been thinking about it a lot. I've been like. You know, obviously Mark's name kept coming up in my mind, but part of me is like, would he do it his first year on Ducati? There's all this hype around Mark's gone to Ducati. He's won the championship. But I don't think it's going to be that simple for him. So yeah, I'm going to go Pecco as well. Got both gone for Pecco. All yeah. Right. Yeah, and I, I... It is, again... Like I said, I think everyone's going to score less points last season at the front of the field there. Um, so I think it will be tight, and I think it will be more guys having a go at each other but i think the one constant at the front's probably going to be petco if i could yep. if i look at them all of those contenders which ones are going to have parts points in the season where they drop off or points get taken away from them by each other i think the one constant up there podium spots all the time fighting for the lead all the time every race most likely contender is petco i think it's just a just the way it is i think at the moment it's just the landscape and to think you know, you're gonna have, if you had Pekka as a three-time world champion, it kind of sounds a bit strange, I think. Yeah. When you look at the quality of some of the guys that have won less in terms of world titles. Uh, but, you know, maybe I'm being, you know, a bit harsh on Pekka. I don't know. Like, maybe he is that good. I'm putting out there. I think Dovi was better in, in his prime. I think Davizioso was just around at a bad time. Well, I have said in the past, I think Banyaya reminds me of like Dovi with good timing. I yeah. think they were very sim com like similar, their, their comparable sort of ability. And when you look at what Dovi was doing against Mark, you have to think like... On a bad Ducati, really. Yeah, and it was only him. Yeah, it was only Lorenzo him. was nowhere. It was uh, only Patrice him. Was nowhere, yeah. You know, so... And, you know, I... I I do think, so when you look at, that's where I think that maybe Fabio is maybe a bit of a more. Alien. He's more alien-like than Pecco. In that, if all, if, if, Moto, if there's this group of riders in MotoGP, but it was 2008, right? And the bikes were 2008 bikes. Yeah. You know, um, when we had those aliens in and stuff like that with the Ducati at the way it was and the Yamaha and the Honda, and they were all pretty competitive and whatever. You know, is Peko a three-time world champion in that scenario? Probably not. You know, I think Fabio's got the edge there because all the bikes could beat each other. You know, it didn't if you were Stoner, um, Pedrosa, Lorenzo, Rossi, they're all on different bikes, but they yeah. all could win races on any weekend. You know, so if it was a bit more like that, whereas I now really is just the Ducatis and then you might have a KTM has a couple of circuits they can challenge for the win Aprilia can maybe challenge for a win somewhere but that's pretty much it there was one era with the aliens where one of them would never have won a race and that's 2011-2012 but that's just right. purely Rossi was on the Ducati like yeah. yeah well yeah yeah 
that was the one bike that would never have challenged, even with no. Rossi in challenge. But yeah, when you let's let's say you took Pecco, um, Fabio, uh, Bastianini, and Binder, uh, yeah, yeah, whatever, and you put them on the two factory Hondas and the two factory Yamahas. It's like is Pecco winning three world championships out of that? Probably not. No, I think they're not. sharing them around a bit. I think Fabio probably has the edge over all of them in that situation. If it was four seasons, I could see it being four to each, yeah. like one to each of them. <laughs> That's like, what I mean. So yeah. when you look at Pecco like that, it is sort of. I would never three like after he won his first one. Would I? Would you go? Oh, is he going to win two more in a row? I'd be like, we might be one more, and then maybe someone else will win, and then maybe he does win a third one down the line. But to think he's going to go three in a row and his favorite to go three in a row now is. It's mad, actually. Like, it's, it's great. It I mean, I have nothing against it. I like Pecco. I like him a lot. I do think he what deserves year? to be twice world champion. When was it? When he first came to MotoGP or something, he was awful on that Pramac Ducati. Yeah, it was like him and, him and Miller on that Pramac, wasn't it? And yeah. out of the two of them at the time, I was like, well, Miller's, Miller's clearly the talent out of those two. Like, he was you know. crashing every weekend. He was, mm. he was really bad, which is a shame because I really liked him in Moto2. Yeah. And then he got onto that factory bike and it just changed. Mm. I don't know what happened to him. Something just happened and he was, here he is. Yeah. What? Two-time MotoGP champion, three-time champion overall with his Moto2 title as well. Yeah. yeah. And we're both picking him to go three in a row in MotoGP. Three in a row is ridiculously hard to do. Yeah. So... There's only been two that have done it in the MotoGP era. Yeah. 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 Mark we'll and Rossi. Yeah. yeah. So you're looking at the top of the tree there. <laughs> yeah, so he he really is now, like in company of the, I think there's the only, absolute greats. There's only two that have done it two times in a row as well. I think about it. Rossi and Mark. I think in the MotoGP yeah, Lorenzo era. never did it. Because he never did it. Nicky never did it. No. So yeah, Joe Amir didn't Jeez. do it. Fabio didn't do it. Yeah, you'd be looking to go back to the two-stroke areas to find be doing before that. Yeah, in yeah, in the proper four-stroke MotoGP era, yeah. Pecco is among the goats of, of the sport. And like, it's mad to, where think. He's it's mad to think, isn't it? It's mad to think where you where this he guy came used to lose to Miller on a Pramac. Like, yeah, he was there for two <laughs> seasons on that Pramac and did like barely anything. And yeah. now, and then it was like just through like succession, he got the factory ride. Like, yeah. yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. his turn. It was his turn to go up. Yeah, because there was yeah. a load of people who didn't want him at first. They were like, oh, yeah, get Jack on someone else, anyone else. And... Yeah. And you know what it was as well, I think? It, this is where Jack shot himself in the foot a little bit, where you like you thought he was, he could have been doing a peco right now, where it was just whoever was the best out of them two was going to be in this situation. Because obviously there was talents coming through like Bastianini and that, so he had to get one of the spots. So it was whoever was the best out of those two was going to keep the ride. Yeah. And... Pecco did away with Jack. Jack, after he won those two Grand Prix that year, and you thought, well, he's going to kick on now, and he still just went back to his old self after that. Fell apart, and, yeah. yeah, and that's like, uh, yeah, coming up from the Australian perspective again, where it really annoys me, actually. <laughs> that, like, we, we could add another world champion there, but anyway. Um, we've got another category, though. Think about, we've got, think about how I feel. I don't know what you said. I have about... no sympathy for you guys or the Americans, all right? You know, it's been a while in Grand Prix racing for us. I don't have any. You had your greats. I've got one of them back here with me, Baza. He was my favourite. Um, Our latest was Jonathan Ray, and he's from Northern Ireland. Like, <laughs> yeah, he doesn't count. <laughs> the Irish should be claiming him. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, it's there been a while. Um, the last category we had this one last year as well. Yeah. Of your three world championships, Colin Vaya, Fermin. Well, yours is David Alonso, Fermin Aldegar, and Pekka Banyaya. Uh, which one scores more points? Now, we're only including for MotoGP the Sunday points. It's only Grand Prix points for a yep. Sunday that include in this. Um, Who have you got? Yeah, purely because I think it's the most boring class at the moment. I've gone with Fermi now to get. I purely just think if he starts the season well, he will win like four races in a row because it's, it's the thing in Moto2, isn't it? We've had the year Raul and Remy were fighting for the championship it was them pretty much in every single race that won the race they just took it in turns pretty much it's just a pretty dull class really for, for yeah. race winners you always get one that's like really like pedro last year just grabs 
the bull by the horns and just goes with it and just yeah. wins the majority. So yeah, I think that's going to be Fermin. Oh, I did the same. I think I picked Pedro for this last year and I picked Fermin this year. Yeah. I think it's an obvious one. Again, unless Pecco runs away with it, which as we've explained through our many answers here today, that we don't think that's going to happen. No. I don't see him running away with it, no. So, yeah. Maybe now to get score the most points. And that's 10 categories, Luke. Did we not cover anything? Did we cover everything? I don't know. Uh, we, we covered everything, I'm pretty sure. I mean, we covered most of it in the first 45 minutes when we did one category. We went through the whole grid. How's Pedro going to go? Yeah, we haven't really spoken about Pedro. Uh, yeah, I've got him down for, for a decent season. I mean, I've well, you got know, him in Consistent my... top 10s, the odd top 5, a podium maybe. Yeah, I've got him in my MotoGP fantasy team. I think he's going to yeah. have a solid season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, he's, okay. He's a very cheap fantasy. I think he might be like the third cheapest rider on fantasy. Yeah, so. and, and in that sense, you think you might be onto something there. Um, on fantasy, this morning of recording this video, I've also recorded my fantasy video, so we'll all be able to see what I've picked in that one. I won't give away, give away anything yet, so I want people to watch it. Okay. Um, but that's coming, a little teaser for everyone there. The, uh, it'll probably be out before this. It'll probably be out before this. So it's quicker to edit. Okay. Um, Pedro, well, I think he'll I think he'll be good. I, yeah. Will he be, like, how good, though? Like, he's going to be, like, with Jack? It depends. Where are you thinking Jack's going to be in the championship? <laughs> yeah. I said he's going to score more than 163 points. So he's, I'm going to have him... Top 10. 200 points for Jack. Let's look at that. If I say Jack's going to get 200 points. Oh, uh, Pedro will be nowhere near that. I reckon so Pedro... So you're thinking Jack, like, last, like Jack's last season, 160-odd points? No, Less? no, I don't think he'll be that. Yeah, I think he'll be, like... Where would over 100 put him from last season? With Frankie at about 13th place. I'd put him about 15th in his rookie yeah. year. That's a solid... That's a, on a KTM, that's a solid start, I reckon, to life. Mm. He won't have a binder rookie season on the KTM. Where he wins a race in his second race in the championship, whatever it was yeah, in that COVID season. That was season. um that was that was awesome. Yeah, I, <laughs> I think no, he'll be he'll be there or there about between fifteenth and tenth, I'll put yeah. him, yeah. So around where Miller was maybe at the end of, of last season. Yep, okay. Yeah, he's, he's he's he'll be one of those really that either will have a, a meh first season and then really kick on or he'll have a really good first season. I could see him have him having a meh first half of the season and then sort of kicking on towards the second half of the season and just popping up every now and then in a really good spot somewhere, maybe in the sprints or, you know, whatever. The, the thing is these days with the sprint races, you do get an opportunity to sort of build quite a weekend if you're short. Come the sprint and you're nowhere. You can make changes and you can, oh, this is what I should have done. That's what I should have done. You know, maybe I should have gone like this into the first corner or whatever. Um you know, get a good launch if you got a shit launch of the first race. So, you know, you, there is opportunity there for a young rider to sort of, it's almost like an extra practice race for you, you know. Yeah. So you're getting more knowledge and, and data and what information every single time uh, than what you used to anyway. Um, so in that sense, I can see like second half of the season, I can really see him kicking on um, and really being like, that's my factory bike for next year, straight into the factory team. And I think he, if he doesn't show anything all year, I think they have a reason to go, look, we'll give you another factory bike, but we're going to leave you in gas gas for another year just to learn the ropes. Keep Jack on for another year because he's re like reliable enough, but reliable in terms of like an old head. He's good at, yeah. he's good at giving feedback and developing bikes. So it's like, it's worth, if, if Pedro doesn't give you enough, that is an option for him. But I think he will. I think second half of the season, he's really going to be hungry for that seat. I think he's really going to be confident and push on after getting a f first sort of, Nine ten races under his belt. And I think that's everyone, because he's yeah. the only guy we didn't really talk about in depth. I think that is everyone. Yeah, covered. <sighs> All right, thanks, Luke. No worries. It's been great again, and we'll uh, we'll have a chat mid season anyway. Maybe yeah. we get a couple in this year. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And sort of take stock. And what's going on and then at the end of the season obviously we're going to add up these scores and we're going to score more points this year because we've doctored the point scoring system so that we get more points imagine well, if we actually didn't get any of these higher or lowers i'd be so <laughs> i think there are some guaranteed though there are some guaranteed surely yeah anyone moving to a honda from a ducati we've got that right 
Javar Mir has to score more than 26 points, so we've got that right. So there's at least three. Zarko points. Marini, I'd like yep. to think we've got right. Zarko as well. Marini, we've got right. Um, Rins, maybe. Rins, we've probably got that right. We've probably got right Rins, Mir, Zarko, and Marini. Four points. The rest, I actually mark. Bastianini is a fifth point. Mark and Bastianini are the six other. Six points. So, yeah. six, we've got six points. Congratulations, yeah. Luke. You scored six points. That's already better than last season. <laughs> that. That's why we did this. That's why we did it. I was tempted to go lose a point for every wrong answer, but I'm like, I'm not doing that this year. We were, I would end up on like minus. <laughs> I, was, I figured we'd be probably, there was a chance that you get those six right, but you get the rest wrong. Because it's pretty pot like this, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really um, is. So we could have ended up on like minus bloody 15 points or something going into That's the next right, question. Yeah. And then we'd never make that back. So I'm glad we didn't do that. Okay, thanks, Luke. We'll catch up during the season. Um, no worries, yeah. Enjoy, Look forward to it. enjoy uh, where are we going, Qatar first. Enjoy that. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. You going to any Grand Prix this year? Um, I've looked at a few. Um, Valencia, maybe. Uh, I finished my degree this this uh, this year, so I have a very long summer. So I'm thinking maybe one over the summer, but, but we'll Brilliant. see where that's at. Brilliant. Yeah. What what would be on your list then? You're thinking like a Magello or somewhere special like that? Um, Magello has always been one that I look at, but it's so expensive. It is. <laughs> it it's, is. That's yeah. why I'm going to Le Mans. You know, to be honest, with the way we've worked it, and people will see this when they watch my video later in the year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the reason we've done it is because everywhere else, Grand Prix circuits tend to often be in like obscure areas. Like you have to fly to like a small city. So the yeah. flights for that city then go up to like to fly from manchester here it's you know you're paying like almost 200 pounds return you know each and i go with my girlfriend so you know it's almost 400 quid for us just to fly and then these the hotels are expensive blah 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 turns out you can get a train to le mans from paris and flights to paris yeah. are not going to go up because there's a race in le mans so the paris flights are like the same price so we've picked that one just because we're saying it's the only one we can really i mean there are things like valencia i guess is similar barcelona they you can you get to the circuits from those cities, so it's not too bad as well. But um, Valencia is so late in the year, I still might get yeah. to that. You know, so Valencia that one's always on the cards as a last minute one. Mm. And then um, uh, Barcelona, I've done before, so I wanted to do something different. So Le Mans stood out because we can get the train there, we're flying to Paris, get the train out to Le Mans, go back to Paris, spend a couple of days in Paris, and then fly home. So it really works out that one. So that's why we've done that one. It's just going to work out like it's just it. It seems awful flying to like one of these small places for a ridiculous amount of money and then paying a ridiculous amount of money to stay anywhere near the circuit. Yeah, it's like Mazzano as well. I think you have to fly to Bologna and then get uh, the train all the way down to, yeah. to Rimini. And they know something. you're doing that, so everything's yeah. expensive. Yeah. And they know you'll want to go to like the Ducati Museum that's in Bologna. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The only other one is like Silverstone because literally on my doorstep where i yeah. live so. i mean I th again that'd be one that i'd decide pretty last minute if i go to that one that, yeah i'm uh, the we, same we just drive down and maybe try and pick up some accommodation nearby like last year we stayed out near northampton so i not last year the year before so I, and you can yeah. see that in my video where i went to silverstone everyone so that's in i'll put that somewhere so yep a lot of things for everyone to click on coming up <laughs> and watch Hit the, the French algorithm end of the season maybe but yeah it'll be yeah there. yeah the, the french ones are going to come out until late in the season but still it'll be good it'll be good i promise uh all right luke uh, you where are you what are you doing at the moment you, you're writing for anyone um currently i'm not actually all I'm right sort of, luke's available yeah. everybody luke yeah. is available focusing on my study agent really. yeah all right well all the best with all that mate come uh come april i'll be uh back to it hopefully april may time i'll be uh all right you'll be able to read yeah. luke's work follow him over on x yeah x. yeah 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 what, what's your <laughs> thing luke uh, uh what is my username <laughs> <laughs> anyway i'll link it down below i'll literally so so you can follow luke and then when he ends up writing interesting shit come april may june middle of the year once he's finished all his studies you can go read it yeah. all right thanks luke Thank you very much. No worries. Always fun being on here. I've enjoyed it. We'll see how we go. Enjoy the first race. Yeah. Catch you, you later, too. mate. Bye. See you later.